Hey, good afternoon. It's Sydney. It is Wednesday, August the 3rd, and I am sitting at the table and my laptop is overheating. <laughs> so it's like in between two books to be able to remain calm and cool during the video. As I was uh, starting to research this morning, it's always a little bit difficult to get back in the saddle after um, a high watch. Um, but I did, and I'm so glad I did, because I believe the Lord showed me that the story that we've been tracking through the heavens, um, especially the position of the moon this week, and her stride on the ecliptic toward the altar of redemption, it's going to be really beautiful. And I know I say that every time, <laughs> but I believe it is. So. Uh, today I have a shorter overview for you on video. There is a lot more in the text, but it's up to you to pick it up or not. And um, I'm going to show you um, an outlook of the heavens for the coming days. In addition to some references in the scriptures, uh, one of them being the account of David and Abigail. Abigail, who was... Uh, interceding on behalf of her evil husband it's like a beauty and the beast tale in the scriptures and she encountered david and she interceded and she humbly petitioned him but also uh, reproved him in a very effective uh, way and she was able to avoid bloodshed and david acting in the flesh and it's an amazing story, and it's woven in for two, into what we're going to see in the heavens. So the end of the summer wheat harvest is in sight. Let's keep our eyes uh, to the heavens, because in the is going to draw nigh this week. So going back to what we covered about uh, today, uh, just briefly, August the 3rd, Mercury will approach Regulus, which is the scepter star, the heart of the lion, and they will conjoin tomorrow. The burden bearer comet is flanking that scene, and we're reminded, of course, of the soon start of the harvest. So in Leo the Lion, the Lord is now marking out the harvest. And in the flanking constellation, Cancer, the sun is on its way out. Resonating with Psalm 19, he will come down to both rescue and judge, because that is the location of the ancient summer solstice, the summer palace of the sun, where it would visually stand still and then come down to uh, earth afterward. Genesis 49, 10, 11, the scepter, regular, the scepter star is a link to that shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt, a link to Issachar, the constellation cancer, to the choice vine. He washed his garments in the light, and, the clo and his clothes in the blood of the grape. And this blood atonement is going to come in to play because where the moon will rise, on August 5th ties back directly to the blood moon and the eclipse we had on May 16th. So the moon, the bride, was also clothed in red. Below we can see how at sundown on August the 3rd the sickle trio are put to the harvest on ground level and how subsequently the moon flanked uh, by spica, the first fruits of wheat, the kernel of, of, of grain, will align with Arcturus, the night watcher and bear keeper, and the swan comet, which is a like a tongue of fire in the harvester booties above. The moon is steadily walking down the aisle toward the altar in Libra. So this is a sign of promise today. It's not yet the event because the crossing over will be a little bit later. And here we have the chief speaker, the forerunner and groomsman, 
approaching the star of Regulus, the heart of the king. It means treading underfoot, that is the serpent below the lion, but it's also known as the scepter star. So when the scepter of the king was extended, grace was extended. And here we have the groomsman, the forerunner, the chief speaker Mercury approaching the heart of the king, the scepter star. Um, the meaning is treading underfoot, and that refers to the serpent underneath the lion. And this is an anticipating um, alignment because the actual crossing over will be a little bit later. So the moon will be in the upper body of Virgo. Spica, the first fruits of grain, or the branch, referring to Jesus, is uh, to the left side of the moon. If we look straight up, it aligns, the moon aligns with Arcturus in Booties, the herdsman, Jesus as the great harvester, and the sickness or swan comet, C202103 20, pan stars, is as a tongue of fire above the harvester. Jesus referred to himself as a grain of summer wheat dying in the spring, bringing forth much fruit in the summer. We covered that in the previous video. And likewise, we are called to die along with Christ, die to self, to be on the altar, so we can also bring forth much spiritual fruit. We are to live as a firstborn, keeping ourselves spotless, because Jesus, the first fruits from the dead, laid out a picture of how we are to live and finally be presented before the Father, not as a sinner, but as a sinner redeemed, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb from, in, from the inside and out. And here, the precious words, well done, a true and faithful servant. The fruit of Jesus' death and him rising as the first fruits, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 23, was the spirit being poured out on the day of Pentecost fully come. So for tomorrow, the heavens declare the restrainer has a chapter change. The comet marking the restrainer C2017 K2 pen stars spends its last day in the constellation of Lucas today as if to mark the soon departure of the restraining power operating in and through the bride, and the chapter of the stinging enemy, Scorpio, opening. It will enter the Scorpion on August the 4th, tomorrow, and reach its brightest phase. So this is a very clear marker in the heavens from the Lord. <clears throat> The upcoming sacrificial offering and prophesied manipulation of times and laws, we find that in Daniel 7.25, are marked by Saturn, a, re a reference to Kronos, the little g god of time and Satan, who is still in the tail section of Capricorn at the stars that have al denoting the coming sacrifice or slaughter. The king planet Jupiter will start to move backward on the ecliptic visually, after the fourth, so there is a big change going on there too, indicating a chapter change and bookending the stationary position it had, reminiscent of when the star guided the Magi to find the Lord and also stood still at that time in Virgo over the house where the young child was. August 4th, Mercury will actually conjoin, come together with the king star in Leo Regulus, on the asterism line of the sickles, handle, and the burden bearer comet below. Perhaps that is the moment which is indicated with the start of the end times harvest, as the sickle will come down and be put to the corn. The harvest picture is amplified by the moon bride aligning with Spica's ear of corn, Spica denoting the branch, the first fruits of grain, and the moon is going to be birthed out of Virgo's upper body portion, right underneath the harvester and herdsman, Bodhis, with the sickness palmet, uh, as a tongue of fire, as a diadem over its head. Know that we are in, awaiting the moment the Lord's summer wheat is actually harvested and taken to the barn. Cancer, the M44 major, is implied because that's the location where grain is kept, the food is kept, 
and the reference to Abraham's innumerable seed, and we are that seed of Abraham by faith. And Virgo, strikingly, only holds a kernel of wheat, a portion of wheat in her left hand. Just like when we covered the wedding at Cana, some was drawn out, some was drawn out, in causing the greater miracle. In this case, she is only holding a kernel of wheat, just some. The comet K2 pen stars reaching its brightest tomorrow and on its way out of the restrainer Ophiuchus. So the Ophiuchus restrainer of the serpent. And um, the comet coming out of that constellation. And it's actually going to cross over in to Scorpio, we see that over here, the transition from Ophiuchus into Scorpio between the third and the fourth. And then the moon on the fourth, it will cross over the asterism line at the star Spica, the first fruits of wheat. And Mercury will actually cross over. So there's a lot of crossing over, like the exact moment of, of this particular alignment of Mercury with Regulus and the burden bearer. So Mercury will actually cross over the handle of the sickle. And we are, of course, waiting for the Lord as the great harvester to come down and reap. Um, I think we're going to be handpicked. <laughs> because the reaping will come later. That is a little bit more drastic. But we are waiting for the Lord to come down. And these uh, events are very detailed. And of course, it remains to be seen as uh, to if this is the appointed time. And the sun is on its way out of the constellation Cancer. It will cross the star Acubena or Acubens and move forward on its way toward the constellation Leo. And here we have the planet Venus, the type of the beloved associated with David. It will be in the constellation Gemini, the bride and groom cluster, aligning with the head of the groom. So we have the beloved, and we have the head of the groom coming in alignment. August the 5th, the moon bride is at the altar. It is to be up, the day of the dancing maidens of shadow in the vineyard on the solar calendar. The lunar calendar is a little bit later. The next day, August the 5th, the moon will rise during the phase which is called the twinkling of an eye, which is at evening twilight. The moon will actually arrive at the biblical altar of redemption. That's where, in the heavens, the Lord is commemorated to have paid our bride price in full. It is also noteworthy in the context of the Lord instructing us to look up, because we would see our redemption drawing nigh. So the moon is also going to be in the first quarter phase, meaning half lit, half dark affirming the biblical prophecy that one day upon the Lord's coming, the Lord will come with a dividing sword. A division will be made between those who are called wise and those who are called foolish. It is still at the left side of the altar the next day, and fittingly, as the moon departs the altar, the asteroid Ceres, Jesus as the grain offering in Cancer, will move into the manger. So, we see a simultaneous event of the moon departing the altar and then Ceres, the asteroid, denoting the grain offering, moving into the manger in Cancer. Again, the place where the innumerable spiritual, innumerable spiritual seed of Abraham is found. It's not just for these reasons that the position of the moon is prophetically interesting, I think, because on May 16th this year, the lunar second Passover, there was a total soul, uh, lunar eclipse over the Americas. And that took place at the biblical coordinate altar of redemption. And it was an embedded full flower moon. The event closed the 
lunar Passover time frame. So that was the extension of grace given to those afar off and ceremonially unclean to be able to partake in the yearly feast. And as the moon eclipsed fully at the time, she reflected her Savior and Bridegroom's spiritual and marital covering. Her given white garments of her own light are amplified by His, and then she was fully washed in His blood. Moreover, this event could also be implied in Joel 2.31, as the prophet announced the tribulation judgment would come after an unspecified darkening of the sun and the moon turning to blood. And the Babylon harlot's location was marked by the eclipse pathway because it took place over the Americas. And those who have kept their garments clean and wrinkle-free will be exempt. And as we read the verse from Joel, remember that Peter, on the day that Pentecost was fully come, was referring back to this prophecy in Joel 2, 31. The sun will be turned into darkness. I think that was the total solar eclipse of December 4th, 2021. And the moon into blood. I believe that was the total lunar eclipse of May 16th, 2022. This year, that's where the moon is going to be before the great and terrible day of the Lord come, which points to the start of the time of Jacob's trouble, and we know that the Lord is going to come beforehand. Matthew 25 alludes to the Lord, who has been afar off indeed, returning for those, having applied his atonement blood to review our works of faith and investment of our given talents. Our works will be tried by fire, not our us ourselves, but our works. As does Proverbs 7, 19 to 20, from the perspective of those entangled in idolatry, reflects because they await their master to return, and meanwhile, they actually indulge in sin until then. So while they expect a reward, their outcome is going to be very different. Matthew 25, 19. We see this division between those who are very fruitful, who have faithfully invested the spiritual talents the Lord has given them, and those who have not. After a long time, the Lord of those servants comes, and elsewhere we read that he is far off, returning from a long journey, and after perceived hearing, and reckoneth with them. And so he that hath received five talents came, and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So this is a picture of our works of faith, of love and obedience to him. We have been tried by fire, and we're going to be rewarded according to um what the Lord considers our work to be. He is the owner of a harvest field. Proverbs 7, 18. And this is from the perspective of those who indulge in sin. Come, let us take our fill of love into the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good one is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come at the day appointed. The day alludes to a day marked out in the heavens and or a feast day. And we can find reference in uh, Genesis 1, Psalm 81, and the Strong's 3, 6, 7, 7. And note that the half-faced moon aligns with the required half-shekel atonement, which had to be paid by adults, everyone 20 year and over, the same people's people whose works are going to be tried by fire when the Lord comes, because those underage children and the feeble-minded will not be held to this standard. These adults were required to pay uh, half a shekel once a year when at the time of the census, and that is recorded in Exodus 30, 13. So we have this division of a half circle or a half shekel and we see a similar division of the moon 
when she arrives at the altar of redemption. So we're at the end of the summer wheat harvest, overlapping with the start of the grape harvest. And we have once again arrived at the altar of redemption viva, where our bride price was once paid in full. So this is the occasion of the total, total lunar eclipse on May 16th this year. So that was over the Americas. It took place, or it started, just outside the main asterism lines in Libra, and it continued on the ramp up of the altar. And why am I saying it was an altar? Because it is now depicted as a set of scales. There is still an alluded meaning to judgment that biblically it was a sacred altar, the altar of redemption, and it is there where the Lord paid our bride price in full. So the um, total lunar eclipse and the full moon took place in this section of the altar and the ramp off because it was an event of a couple of hours. The full moon was in between and again the location of the onset of the total lunar eclipse and a full moon, and the moon progressing from just outside the asterism lines toward Scorpio, but it took place in the Alta Libra. So the May 16th total lunar eclipse took place just outside Libra's Alta borders on its ramp, and as the moon turned blood red, it is as if the moon glowed from being fanned to flame, having traversed over the redemption altar. The astronomic full flower moon took place during the middle of the eclipse time frame at 414 at the star Gamma Libre, or also known as Zulvan El Akhra. And that star points to the price of the conflict. Remember when we were talking as I was walking through Amsterdam that we had to count the cost. And, <clears throat> and of course the Lord has done likewise. He knew he had to pay the highest price possible for his beloved believers and especially for his bride. And as the moon bride was blood covered, I understand the altar backdrop and lunar forefront position to mean that the redemptive price has been paid in full because we have been liberated in the spirit. That is the backdrop. The moon was dressed in white and that happened at the forefront. Her given white garments were fully covered in the bridegroom's blood atonement. So in due time, her redemption would be completed in the natural, as she is taken up to heaven. The bride has made herself ready by the Spirit and the Word, and the groom's blood atonement has been applied in her works of faith. <clears throat> Her works of love and of obedience, her homecoming and crowning still await, which I believe is pictured nearby on the ecliptic in the constellation Sagittarius. The white horse rider, stationed at the end of the believer's race after she crosses over the heavenly uh, river, the celestial backdrop of the Milky Way, and has overcome the stinger stars of Scorpio. And this month, the moon will arrive in Sagittarius on August 8th. So that uh, blood moon and eclipse, that's where we were given both white garments. We have been washed in the Lord's blood and now it is up to us in between that time frame of May 16th to when the Lord comes to keep our garments clean. The moon is at first quarter. That's the divided moon, half lit, half darkened, on August the 5th, on Friday, and of course that's also the day of the start of the Swedish Boys Vision, and um, here we see the alignment of the moon. So the moon will rise at the right side of the Redemption Altar in the evening, and during the uh, day time frame, so in the early morning time frame, 8.23 just about, it will be at the exact same spot where the blood moon, uh, total eclipse took place, but that is out of sight for us, 
and on the 6th the moon will rise in the constellation Scorpio so I believe for us this picture is um, valid on August the 5th Venus will be in alignment with the groom in the bride and groom cluster still Sirius the uh, bright morning star Revelation 22 will rise before the Sun so that is the announcement still of the Prince of Peace coming down to snatch his own this is when the moon will be first visible at about seven o'clock um, Jerusalem time it's usually Jerusalem time I use so about 7 Jerusalem time, as the sun sets, this is the twilight portion of the evening, which is known as the twinkling of an eye. So that's when the moon becomes visible at the backdrop of the altar, Libra. And on the next day, the moon will rise um, at the exact location where the total lunar eclipse and the full moon took place, but that will be out of sight. So as soon as the sun goes down and the moon will become visible the moon by that time will already be in Scorpio so I believe this sign is pertaining to August 5th alone and as the moon is departing the constellation Libra entering into Scorpio Ceres will align with the manger the beehive, beehive cluster in Cancer a reference to the innumerable seed of Abraham and that was again what Moses when he interceded for the people when they were caught in idolatry he interceded on the base of the reputation of the Lord his promises to his people and especially he was referring back to the promises the Lord had made to Abraham August 6th the Lord comes out of his place the sun will align with the alpha star Acubens or Acubena in the constellation Cancer on August the 6th. Acubena in Hebrew and Arabic means sheltering or hiding place, which is a place, of course, of safety and security. That is the true safety and security the Lord provides. Resonating with Psalm 32.7, the hiding place confirming we may rest in the Lord's pavilion in our spiritual chambers. Venus aligns with the head of the bridegroom portion in Gemini, the star Pollux, the head of the groom. So we have the beloved joining the head or the capstone star of the bridegroom. The hiding place also resonates with the verses from Isaiah 26, relaying exactly where we are in prophetic time. And astronomically as the sun, the bridegroom is in his place or his house right now. Because con the constellation Cancer used to be the ancient summer solstice location, the Father's house, the Sun will soon come down to both rescue and judge. And as we are, uh, most of us are aware, at the time of our departure, there will most likely be upheaval. So we may expect some indignation passing over as we follow our bridegroom, coming out of his place to both rescue the bride and the innocent in Christ and judge the wayward and those outside of faith psalm 19. the um, constellation cancer was the ancient summer palace and the summer solstice location like as a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pangs so have we been in thy sight O Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they rise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut the door, shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. 
And this is the star Acubane and marking the hiding place in the constellation Cancer, the Travelers Inn, the Father's House, the Cattle Fold, the place where we find the Lord's rest. That is going to be aligned with the Sun on August 6th. And Venus will be aligned with the head, the star Pollux, in the groom portion of the constellation Gemini, the bride and groom cluster. And when the moon arises tonight, it is still in an altar Libra at the beginning. The next day, it will be crossing over from Libra into Scorpio. So the redemption picture will transition into the picture of the enemy. Cancer's ancient shape. In the Bible, you can find the references to Cancer in the Hebrew word Neve, Strong's 5, 119. There's a reference in Isaiah, in Job, in Ezekiel, and the Psalms. You can pick it up in the article over here. And this is what the ancient cattle fold used to look like. So it was not a crab, it was a round cattle fold with the manger, the beehive cluster, the M44 uh, cluster, also known as Persepa, where the innumerable seed of Abraham are kept safe, and the multifold cattle were kept. And that's, of course, reminiscent of the ancient uh, nave or cattle fold in the field. So this is where the wilderness flock of the Lord finds uh, its rest. And it is designed in such a way that the shepherd himself was the porter and the protector of the sheep. He made sure that no one or nothing got in and no sheep were able to um, stray or escape from the pen because he was the door. Our inner chamber in the wilderness, Pastor Bob relays to us, Bob Reed that is, so beautifully how the purpose of the chamber is for privacy because that's where the intimacy between the bride and the groom takes place. We shared about the similarities between the watchman's booth or the tabernacle in the vineyard and the chuppah or chuppah as the chamber, the room, the canopy, the closet, and the divine protection. That is also where the grapes were stored before they were, tre were treaded in the wine press. So the watchman in the vineyard has a role not just to watch for and watch out, but that was also for safekeeping of the fruits. It is culturally understood to be the man's duty to go away after the betrothal to be with his father, to build a house, an apartment, like an add-on room or an addition to the existing house and prepare for the eventual wedding. Before the bridegroom departs, he will make a statement to the bride. We find in John 14, two, uh, verses 2 and 3. In my father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. And we may hide in, in a private inner chamber of the Lord, reflected in the cancer sheepfold. So too will we, the first fruits of the summer harvest, be hidden in heaven before tribulation comes. These scriptures indicate that. First Kings uh, 22-25 And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt Go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Psalm 27, 5. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Psalm 30, 31, 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. When the bridegroom comes out of his place, as the sun does at this time, when it is time to call us the bride out of our chamber, then the time is arrived to arise and come away at the time 
of Solomon's ready and tender grapes reflective also of the first bride's Leah's soft and tender eyes. To be called up to a place of safety, like foretold in promise to the Church of Philadelphia in the book of Revelation. And remember Smyrna is also a bridal church, but they are called to remain faithful under a time of tribulation lasting ten days. The Song of Solomon 2.10 My beloved spake and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear in the earth, and the time of the singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree put it forth, her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, thou art hidden in the clefts of the rock. In the secret places of the stairs, that's the hiding place. Let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice. Come forth, speak out. For sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Take us the little foxes, the little sins that spoil the vines that affect our spiritual fruition, for our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. And the lily, lilies are like little trumpets in the valley, announcing the Lord's coming. Revelation 3.10 Be, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, we, have be, we are called to be patiently enduring. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. Try them that dwell upon the earth. The Lord will beckon them unto repentance, to salvation, and to endure until the end. While exiting the sheepfold, we may witness the onset of the indignation passing over, just like the Israelites in Goshen did before their escape during Passover, but they were not the object of the Lord's judgment, judgment, they saw it with their eyes alone. Talking about going from the cattle fold where the asses are tied to the next constellation, Leo, indicative of the heavenly Jerusalem. There's a beautiful story in the scriptures of saddling an ass to Jerusalem. Abigail's rescue and wedding to David. Abigail in the scriptures is a type of a wise bride who intercedes on behalf of her household and foolish husband. She seeks peace. She prevents David from shedding innocent blood and prophesies over him while submitting to his lordship. In 1 Samuel 25 verses 39 to 42, Abigail, who is the second of David's seven wives, is informed that the anointed Prince David, which is a foreshadowing of course of the Lord, wants to take her as his bride after the encounter in the vineyard and him rising up as a military ruler. He is in the process of now. David, remember when we were talking about David and Jonathan, having to part ways at the stone of departure, he had to become a fugitive from Saul. And this time he has assembled a lot of men and he's in the process of becoming a military ruler. And she is cautioning him to not overstep the Lord's boundaries and to not uh, shed innocent blood because he was offended by what her husband Nabal did to uh, undermine and subvert him. She responds and rises in haste with five of her damsels, the wise virgins, to depart and go to David for the marriage. So after that scene, when she, where she intercedes, David uh, or, or her ex-husband, um, her former husband, I should say, is given ten days to repent, which he does not, and the Lord strikes him. So Nabal dies, and David offers her his hand in marriage. Compare this with Matthew 25, 1, 13, where five wise virgins who truly had oil went forth to meet the bridegroom. They came out of their dwelling place and were called forward into the field to meet the Lord halfway. Interestingly, the name Abigail means the father's joy, the gift of the father, meaning that 
The bride is the joy set before the Lord, and the gift of the Father to the Son. And the month of Av means the month of the Father. So, I hope this is the month that the Father says to the Son, Go get your bride. Abigail, the wise peacemaker, the broken, um, who was broken free from her evil and foolish husband, Nabal, by the intervention, ultimately the judgment of the Lord. She moves from her sheep farm. She saddles an ass. Both aspects of the story refer to the constellation cancer and progresses on, onward to Jerusalem, together with five maidens who follow her. And that is in response to David sending messengers to her, extending his request for her, in, her hand in marriage. In the heavens, we see the chief speaker and messenger conjoining with the king star regulars this week, Venus pairing up with the bridegroom in Gemini, the moon arriving at the redemption altar. The location of uh, Carmel, um, and um, the backdrop of the sheep farm, it actually points to a vineyard in the Hebrew language. So we are now talking about the overlap of the summer wheat harvest, which is ending, right? We are in the end of the summer wheat harvest and the traditionally by the agricultural calendar in Israel, the grape harvest starts on August 1st, so we're exactly in the time of Pentecost fully come. And this story is also located in a vineyard. Enemy signaling. So to the Freemasons, cancer is the capstone or the missing keystone of their arch, of their work. And they appear to know that it's related to the glory coming down in cancer to fill the temple known as the celestial northern gate so in some depictions sirius is blazing underneath currently in its heliacal rise the first rise before the sun the announcement of the hottest time of the year the the last summer door in other words we see a beehive indicative of the beehive cluster in the constellation cancer as well so the enemy is aware of the seasons of the prophetic time and then there is the worldly crown of pride as the royal di diadem versus the crown that the lord promises his bride the crown of overcoming right next to the harvester booties in the heavens so soon a Division will be made with, between those now wearing a crown of self-righteousness and pride and those who will be awarded a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. Isaiah 62, verse 3. There's a link between August 5th and 9-11. You can read about that. Over here, the, their rendition of royal crowns and diadems. But... These are only the earthly promises, and we are looking forward to heavenly promises. The month of Av begins. The Feast of Wine has started, um, and I was graciously reminded that it was not a one-day thing. So we are still in that feast, and maybe the Lord will actually come in the middle of the feast, like the central stem on the menorah on the lunar calendar the start of the feast of new wine was yesterday and the next day the fourth of all was the weighing of the silver and gold that esra and his followers brought to the second temple and that is indicative of the bride and the wise virgins nehemiah came to jerusalem to restore the walls around the city and that is indicative of the working of the holy spirit the protective covering around the city and the lord amazingly kept all the enemies of the israelites at bay as long this as they were working on the restoration of the wall the first temple was actually invaded on the seventh the eighth of Av, a division was 
apparent because when the 10 spies returned from their 40 day tour into the promised land, we had two very good reports and many not so good ones. So a division between those acting and walking in faith and those who didn't became very clear. And then the ninth of Av, the Tishabi Av, reminder of the people under the leadership of Moses who came out of the wilderness, those who were condemned to die in the desert. Approximately 15,000 adult Jewish male died each day on Tisha B'Av. On the ninth of Av, the holy temples were destroyed by the Babylonians and the Romans, respectively. So that is a very pronounced day of judgment in the Jewish history. And um, that is also the time frame of final preparations from the 9th of Av to the 15th to uh, to be of the spiritual application of the scarcity of oil pertained to this time frame. And here we have the maidens in the vineyard. The fields are white. The Shiloh maidens in the vineyard. The 15th of Av in Jewish history, forgiveness of the sin for not believing the spies, the Shiloh maiden snatch, the rapture picture, the end of the year for planting, the ban on intertribal marriage was lifted. It's also known as the Day of the Axe. And um, this was last year, actually, because Obama's birthday, as we know, is uh, tomorrow. So August the 4th, which is also... Um, Beast Day is the, I think, the 216th day of the year. And that's where the quote-unquote birth certificate said he was born in Hawaii. Interestingly, it's also the day that the cornerstone of the Statue of Liberty was dedicated. Back to Jewish history. The Jews, while wandering in the desert, were commanded by Moses to sleep in their graves as a punishment for not believing the spies who were sent out into the promised land. The Jewish uh, uh, people who slept in their graves each year would rise from their graves and discover that 15,000 of the older generation had died that night. This continued to happen until the older generation had died off. So then to the younger generation, Tuba Av would become a day of celebration because they knew at long last that they were freed from the curse of the grave. So they literally came up out of the grave. And those um, 20 and younger were free to enter the promised land under the leadership of Joshua. And Caleb was the other um, leader who came back with a good report from the promised land. So it was both Joshua and Caleb leading people into the promised land. Tuba Av is the day of the forgiveness for the sin of the spies. Just like Yom, Yom Kippur was the day of forgiveness for the sin of the golden calf. So, as the people resort or slide away in, uh, into idolatry, the Lord offers forgiveness. But there is a time of redemption and sanctification in between. So, it's tied to full redemption and entry into the promised land, symbolizing their preordained inheritance. And then the snatch of the maidens in Shiloh, the dancing in the vineyards, Numbers 21-21. The women's dancing strongly resonates with Matthew 24-38, as well as Sol the Song of Solomon 7 and 6, which seem to point to the dancing of the bride, just like the Lord promised us. We are going to run like cats from the stall, like act all crazy and goofy. <laughs> Again, a parallel to the fact that the virgins would dance in the fields on Tuvia. Shiloh also refers to Jesus in Genesis 49.10. Tuba'al is the 15th of Av. Semek is the 15th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It is written as a circle resembling, resembling the dance of the maidens of Tuvia. The dance of the virgins is also noted in Jeremiah 31.13. So the ban on intertribal marriage was lifted, and that resonates with Ruth and Boaz, the kinsman redeemer. It was also the day of the breaking of the axe when the holy temple existed. The cutting of firewood for the altar was completed on this day every year. 
The event was celebrated by feasting, rejoicing, and the ceremonial breaking of the axis. It could prophetically be interpreted as the preparation of the sacrificial altar for its trial and judgment by fire, per tribulation. Prophetically, it could tie with Luke 17, verses 26 and 20 to 29, and Ah 15, being the last day of the year, for building, for planting, for marrying, for buying and selling, in other words, for life as normal. Luke 17, 26, just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. So if you want to know more about the marking of Tubia with the end of the year for planting of sorrow, um, you can read it over here. In Jeroboam's days, the roadblocks he had put up uh, to Jerusalem were removed. It is also the last trumpet of the year before the Feast of Trumpets. And a red thread in the Tuba of tap tapestry is the reintegration of all those set apart and willing to go out by faith. There is an element of reintegration of groups of people who, within the whole of the people of Israel and with the Father, so they recreate a unity that lies at the core of the nation of Israel. The group is first set apart, and then after trials and tribulation, judgment too. They are integrated. When they repent, they turn back and become obedient, and then step out by faith and become overcomers. Roadblocks are removed and the reunification with the Lord. Private unions and prior fellowship are restored. Tuba Av is uh, in the context of the month of the Father, the Father making arrangements for a wedding, a high point in the calendar, just like a mountain and summer solstice. In ancient times, the Father selected a bride for his son. It was the Father's will, it his desire. If the rapture occurs in the month of Av, it would be especially appropriate. Av meaning father, and it derives from the will or desire. We know from the scriptures, and we know from our heart. Jesus is the desire of ages. Oil is going to be scarce in August. One more timely motif concerning the olive oil. The olive harvest for Israel would have been after the months of Av, Elul, and Tishri. The summer months would be months of dwindling supplies of olive oil for cooking, for lambs, or whatever. Increasingly limited and scarce, more valuable, the olive oil in the small clay lamps that lit the way to the wedding canopy during the night hours. In the wedding parade, the bride cry goes out at midnight, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. When would the preparation for the possession of enough oil, oil for the lambs of the virgins be most vital? Jean Stepnowski asks. Olive oil for the lambs would be most precious in the months where it's least available. The merchants had little to sell, or at the end maybe even none. Increasingly during the three summer months before the next annual olive harvest for Israel began in the month of Chesphan. Watchmen built their tabernacles in the vineyard at this time to guard and shelter the grapes, the fruits of the Spirit. A wedding picture as the bride is reflected in these first ri uh, ripening grapes, Isaiah 1 8. The Hebrew word for cottage is sukkah, uh, and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in the vineyard as a large inner garden of cucumbers, as a besieged a city. It is the same word used to describe the tabernacles, or booths used during the Feast of Tabernacles. It is also the same word used in Jonah 4, 5. So Jonah went out of the city, he sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth. He sat under it in the shadow, till he might see what would become of the city. As Christians, we are now the husbandmen of the Lord's vineyard. 
Someday we will present him with a harvest of fruits. Harvest in their seasons. We are also to be watchmen in tabernacles and the watchtowers that he assigned to us. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits. This is a hindsight perspective. As the summer gleanings of the vintage, there is no more cluster to eat. My soul desires the first ripe fruit. They will be confronted with the good man having perished out of the earth. And there is none upright among men. They, are all, they all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asked, and the judge asked for a reward, and the great man he uttereth his misch mischievous desire. So they wrap it up. The best of them is as a briar, the most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall be their perplexity. So as watchmen in the vineyard of the Lord, we are watching out, watching over, looking for the Lord's coming, watching on to our own heart, our thoughts, our actions, and word, uh, words we express. And we watch over the spiritual fruit that we have gathered and we safeguard. Watch therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So I hope that getting back on the saddle uh, today with me was uh, a blessing for you. And I pray and I hope we will see one another at the soonest, I think, as I always do, <laughs> what the Lord puts before us in the scriptures and the heavens um, is uh, to me it's breathtaking, breathtaking what, what he does and every week he fills us with promise and expectation and I hope that this week will be the fulfillment of that promise so thank you for watching and as led I will see you in the comments much love